Hello, and welcome back to AP Teacher Week 2020. Uh, this is our second AP Teacher Week session of the week. Uh, my name is Claire Lorenz, and I work on the AP Instruction Team here at the College Board. Uh, if you joined me yesterday for our discussion on AP Daily videos, you know I like to say we'll keep this short and sweet. So without further ado, let's continue. So just as a recap, uh, AP Teacher Week 2020 is this series of live events in which we're doing a deep dive into the instructional resources uh, that the AP program has designed to support uh, all AP teachers in any learning environment. For this particular session, we are gearing this towards AP history and uh, arts teachers. Um, we recognize that the 2020-2021 school year has many uncertainties associated with it as your school districts are preparing uh, to have you go back either in person in some sort of hybrid or blended learning structure or in a completely online or virtual environment. And it's our hope that the resources that you're hearing about this week can help provide the practice and support your students will need regardless of when and how instruction is delivered at your school this coming academic year. For this particular session, we'll be focusing on our topic questions in AP Classroom. So just as a reminder, when we think about our entire suite of AP resources, we think about how they support teaching and learning from both the teacher perspective and from the student perspective. And uh, we think about that teaching and learning cycle uh, as a series of six steps. You can see those six steps here off to the side. Um, if you had a chance to join us last week for our uh, introductory webinar on AP resources, you probably heard me talk a little bit more about the unit guides within the course and exam description. Uh, and if you had a chance to join us yesterday, or even if you didn't and you'd want to watch uh, our video on YouTube, uh, you can learn more about our AP daily videos and how they support the teach stage of this uh, instructional planning and delivery cycle. But today we're going to focus mostly on this practice uh, section uh, and talk about how the topic questions in AP Classroom can support uh, student practice of course content and skills. So let's start with the basic topic questions. What are they? Uh, so topic questions are formative assessment questions that provide students with practice applying course content and skills for each topic within a unit. Topic questions are meant to meet students where they are at a particular point in the school year and progressively get more complex from unit one toward the middle and then the end of the course, especially since that is how most most of the skills unfold in the course. In unit one, we see more foundational content and skills. Uh, then we move to more proficient or intermediate content and skills in the middle of the course, and then more advanced content and skills toward the end of the course. And topic questions will uh, provide students with practice uh, as they reach each of those stages in the course. Um, at the same time, topic questions enable teachers to check for understanding early and often uh, to inform any other type of individual or class level support that they may want to provide students. So in other words, topic questions were made to be used as you teach each topic within the course. Um, all of the courses who are, uh, are teachers from courses that are joining me today, your all of your uh, all of your courses have units and all of them have topics. Each time there is a break and a new topic, there is a set of topic questions that you can use in a variety of different ways to assess student understanding of the content and skill of that topic. So these topic questions then 
provide a means for teachers to get just-in-time feedback to help identify common student misunderstandings. So a lot of topic questions will be multiple choice and you'll be able to have AP Classroom score them for you right away, which will give you a robust set of data and help you make decisions about where you may need to do either some reteaching, some remediation, or you may um, want to think about where that skill comes next in your course. And if students are having difficulty with a particular skill, you'll be able to ramp up toward uh, that skill again before the next time the students see it. Um, at the same time, we're also providing students with feedback through the topic questions because every topic question will have rationales for both correct and incorrect answers. So if students are taking the topic questions online, then they will be able to click through their results and not only see what the correct answer and incorrect answers are, but understand why the correct answer is correct and why the incorrect answers were not the appropriate responses. So again, topic questions help provide practice to students, allow teachers to check for understanding, and really provide a means of feedback data-wise for teachers and uh, through the rationales for students so that uh, teachers and students can make most of the time that they have together, especially what, what we know uh, might be uh, a stressful start to the school year. So how should you use or assign topic questions? Well, the truth is they can be used in a multitude of different ways. So you can assign topic questions before, during, or after instruction. Here are just a few ways that you can use them. Uh, you can use them as warm-up questions, as, as a way to start your class and set the stage for the learning that will be done that day. Um, and you can use ones that are either from the topic before or even of uh, the topic that you are teaching that day. Uh, they can be used as homework questions. If you like to give your students reading ahead of time before they come to class and you do in-class discussion or lecture or activity, then uh, you can assign topic questions as homework to understand what students might have gleaned from their pre-reading, but you can also assign it as homework after you've done your in-class teaching to get a sense of what students understood about the lesson and the instruction that went on that day. Uh, you can also use it as uh, an exit ticket, just like you use a, you may use it as a warm-up question to start your class. You can use it as a means to end your class and get a quick sense of what students took away from uh, the day's lesson. Uh, I'm sure that there are other uh, ways that you can think of to use topic questions. We find that these are the most common ways in which they get used. Um, but we're going to show you a little bit more about how to uh, assign topic questions and find them in AP Classroom. We know uh, we have a short time together today, and uh, we do want you to be able to see this live time. So I'm going to switch over to AP Classroom. Uh, if you'd like to follow along with your own course, please feel free to do so. I'm starting here at um, um, you could just go to myap.collegeboard.org. It's myap.collegeboard.org. And you're going to sign in on this page using your own username and password. This is my username and password. Um, so I'm going to click submit. As we load here, I'm going to take this opportunity to say, um, I I have access to a fictional high school, Trevor Packer High School, uh, and I have access to several uh, AP courses here. Um, so you will not see all of these courses when you log in, and that is okay. You will see the courses, uh, you have access to the courses you are course audit authorized to teach. Um, and so for some of you that may be just one course, some of you may teach more than one course. Maybe you teach just music theory, 
but maybe you teach art history and European history, or maybe you teach US history and AP World History Modern. Uh, so however many AP courses you see here, you will see icons for those particular courses. And the color and icon should match uh, what you see in the AP course and exam description. You'll see a nice new streamlined process here, including a very obvious way to log into AP Classroom right here. Um, but also as you scroll down, and I'll use Art History as an example, I can go to AP Classroom directly from this icon, but I can go to the progress check section, uh, the question bank section, I could go to the course and exam pages on AP Central, I can see the join code for my section, etc. Um, we will be talking more about the progress checks and the question bank on our AP Teacher Day sessions uh, tomorrow and on Thursday, so I hope you'll join us for that. Um, in the meantime, I'll just also point out here that we've elevated this list of additional teacher resources that used to sit at the bottom of the AP Classroom page so that you have quick and easy access to things like the course audit, the teacher communities, exam scores, the ability to search for PD workshops, and then if you have specific other course needs, like you need access to the digital portfolio because you do AP with We Service. Um, if you happen to teach studio art, um, you can access that through here as well. Uh, if you don't need access to those things, you will not see those here because this list and this page are curated to you as a specific AP teacher. Okay, so for today's demo, I am going to use uh, AP US History, and I'm going to scroll down until I get to that, uh, and I'm just going to click on Go to AP Classroom here. As I'm being logged in, one of the things that you will notice right away as we get in here uh, is a much cleaner look to the home page. Uh, what you will see here uh, is a prominent viewing of the options that you have to choose from in terms of menu, uh, a very clear way to see your course. If you teach more than one course, uh, you will have access to toggle between your courses here. Uh, you'll have this blue banner that usually has as uh, the latest and greatest updates from uh uh, from AP Classroom. But what we were able to do is to elevate the unit structure uh, that used to sit further down the page so that you can very clearly see um, the access to uh, the unit topics and then also the topic questions, which is really what we want to spend time talking about today. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit here and I'm just going to point out a couple of things that might be helpful. Uh, if you don't want to be flipping through your course and exam description uh, for a particular unit, know that you can find the unit guide for the unit that you are in by just clicking that link and it will bring up the part of the CED that literally just refers to unit one so that you can see any unit openers and unit at a glance um, and uh, all the topic pages for that particular uh, for that particular unit. What I will point out here is that on the unit at a glance page, no matter what course you're looking at, if I zoom in here, you will see the topic title and you will see the suggested skill. And you'll see that there is a, a, a number and letter here. There's an alphanumeric label. There's also a description of what that skill is. All of this has been carried over to our a unit at a glance table that's here. It's a little bit more streamlined. So you can see we don't have all of the extra text, but you can actually click on this and find what that text is. Uh, you can also click on, uh, you can also click on the topic itself and you will be jumped to that particular topic page. So if you want to know what learning objectives or key concepts are associated with this particular topic uh, or historical developments that are associated with the, with the uh, topic, you'll be able to see that by just clicking on the to uh, topic name. Additionally, we've given you some guidance just like we do in the CED about the number of instructional periods. Please remember that this was meant for to reflect the number of class periods if you were on a 45 minute 
uh, class that meets five days a week for a full academic year that's also face to face. So we realize that uh, this may take on a whole new different meaning as we start the 2020 2021 school year, but please use it feel free to use it as a guide as to how much time you should spend in unit one. Um, and then also the uh, percentage of the multiple choice section of the AP exam that comes from the content of this unit. So just a couple of ways to orient you to this page, um, but the star of the show for today's session are the topic questions. And you can see as you, as you kind of scroll through the unit topics here that there is a topic question link next to every topic skill pairing. So the topic questions are going to be used to assess students' understanding of the content that is in this particular topic and this skill. So if I look at topic 1.2 in US history, which is Native American societies before European contact, I can click here again and I can see what the learning objectives are and what the historical developments are. Um, I can also click on the skill and I can see that students should be uh, practicing identifying his, a historical concept development or process in this particular uh, topic. So as a teacher, if I'm going to try to teach this content together with this skill, then the topic question should assess student understanding of those two things. And so I would expect any topic questions that come up for topic 1.2 and skill 1A to be uh, focused on this content, but also ask students to identify a historical concept development or process. So let's test that theory and see what these look like. Um, I'm going to click on topic questions and I'm going to use this link because when I do something very special happens. So remember, we're looking at 1.2 and skill 1A. So I'm taken to the question bank and you will notice that my filters have already been engaged to uh, identify questions that correspond with that particular topic, with that particular skill, and fall into the formative assessment category. So frequently when I do these presentations, I get the question, uh, Claire, that's great. Um, I thought the question bank was where we could find old AP exams and um, practice exam questions. Are these from there or is that not the case? Uh, so the answer is, is that while the question bank does house a lot of our summative exam questions, that means questions that came from old AP exams, released AP exams, practice exams, the course and exam description, et cetera, it also houses our formative topic questions. Um, and you can get those questions most easily by clicking on the topic questions link from the home page. Um, the reason that these are in um, the question bank is because we are giving you the freedom to assemble them into assignments that make the most sense for you. Uh, you can see that three questions came up here. I may decide that I want to use all three at one time. I may decide that I want to use just one as an exit slip. Um, and I maybe I want to save one for tomorrow for uh, a warm up to review what I did in class the day before. You have the freedom to do all of that. And that's why these questions are in the question bank so that you can assemble them in a way that makes most sense for you and for your students. So um, you can see right away that these are the topic questions. The light bulb icon has now carried over. You can see that they are multiple choice. Uh, you can see the name of the unit. You can see the name of the topic. If I've forgotten, you can see the name of the skill, uh, the description of the skill if you've forgotten from the previous page. So you don't have to keep hitting, hitting back and forth. Um, I can now also preview these questions. So remember, this is a, this was about um, Native American societies before European contact, and then also identifying a historical concept development or process. So I'm going to look at one of the questions, and you're going to see uh, I'm going to get a, a stimulus, uh, and then I'm going to get a question. It says, which of the following most supported the development of the commerce described in the third paragraph? If I read this uh, source 
source, I'm going to know right away that it does relate to Native American societies before European contact. In fact, I can see that right away, just in the first phrase that's here. Um, but I also understand that the question is asking students to identify a particular uh, uh, development um, or, or uh, at least elaborate on that development in some way. So you will see very clearly that these questions have been designed in a way to test both content and skill. Um, if you want to see a little bit more about the question, uh, what's hidden over here on the side is this question scoring and details panel. If you click this, a couple of things happen. So well, this pops out and we get a lot of information here and I'll go over that in a second. But the thing that we'll, you will see first is the we've um, highlighted the correct response to this question for teachers, and we've shown you the rationale for that correct answer. This is the same rationale that students will be able to see when they take this question online, uh, so they will understand why this is the correct answer. But if students um, had chosen an incorrect answer, they will see what the correct answer is and they will be able to click there and read the rationale for that correct answer. But they will also be able to see why the answer that they've chosen is incorrect. And there is an uh, incorrect there is a, a, a rationale for that incorrect response here. Um, usually what we try to do when these rationales were created was to hint at a possible under, misunderstanding a student may have had. Uh, so there's acknowledgement here of like something that is true about this statement, um, but there's a reason as to why that is not the answer. Um, th you'll find that the rationales are meant to be short and concise. Uh, we know that students will probably um, be scrolling for this type of thing very quickly. So we wanted to make it digestible and not have a full paragraph here. So you, you may find the need to do a little bit more reteaching if like all of your class got a particular question wrong, um, but there's enough information here for students to really kind of hone in on their own learning and get a sense of what they might uh, still not have a clear understanding about through the use of the rationales. Um, we get some exam details on the side. So we see um, how well it's aligned to the current course and exam, what learning objective, thematic focus it's, it's uh, aligned to, uh, what unit topic it came from, the fact that it is a topic question, what skill it's aligned to. Uh, I know our, our history courses have reasoning processes, so that's tagged in here as well. I can see that this is part of a question set, meaning I would expect this stimulus to come up again or this source to come up again with a different question um, and what type of stimulus text it is. Um, this is a single secondary source. And these are things that you're going to be able to search for in the question bank at a later point in time if you wanted more of this type of text source. So there's a lot of robust information here for you as a teacher so you can really dig into what your students may need additional help with in terms of uh, your lessons and instruction. I can either add this to an assessment that I create or I can continue to kind of scroll through the questions. Uh, you'll see this is now a different question uh, with the same uh, stimulus source. Um, and then here is a third question with the same stimulus as well. So this would be a case where maybe because the stimulus is the same, you would want to assign all three at the same time, but you still have the freedom to assign these as separate questions if you'd like to do that instead. Um, I can, again, add these to my quiz or, or my custom assessment, or I can X out of here and I can go back to this home screen, uh, this question bank screen, and I could say, you know what, I liked all three of these questions. They all tie to the same stimulus. So I could just add all three of these to my quiz. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to label this as topic 1.2 review. Maybe I want to assign it as homework after I've done some in-class instruction on topic 1.2. I'm going to click create quiz and uh, we kind of jump to this screen. I want to go back for a second because this is the screen that we were just on. You can see it now says three questions have been added to topic 1.2 review. I can undo that if I want. But if you recall, there used to be, if you used AP Classroom last year, an assessment builder like portion of the screen right over here on the right. Well, we 
got some feedback from teachers that that was very crowded. And so what we did was we moved that to a new tab. Before I made this quiz, it just said uh, build quiz. Uh, but now that I've named it topic 1.2 review, it's its own tab. I can edit that title. I can see how many questions are on that assessment that I've made. And if I click there, I can now, um, I can now very easily move these questions around. I can change the order of them by using the up and down arrow keys. I can um, uh, delete one of them. I can see that I've now captured all three questions that share this passage. So I know that there aren't any lingering ones hanging out somewhere else in case I wanted to use it. I can see that they are all aligned to the same topic and the same skill. They are all the formative topic questions. So I I'm able to see a lot more here than what I had been in the past. So I'm going to move forward and I'm going to show you a little bit about what this is going to look like if we assign. And uh, you can see quickly here that I have uh, just one section. If you have multiple sections, you'll be able to choose from a section here. Uh, you can choose to do online or print. Uh, my big encouragement is that you do administer these in an online format because if you do it in a print format, you will not get the automatic feedback on the data for your class. And and your students will not be able to read the rationales for the correct and incorrect answers online. So uh, the best bet for topic questions is to administer them online, although, although we do have an option for you to administer them in print. Um, see student results uh, or when do students see results so there's two options here either after scoring or no um, just a little bit of a, a, a word to the wise is that uh, if you ever want to know what any of these things really mean please just click on the icon that's here and it will give you some information about the options so you will see here that it says um, if you keep this on after scoring students will be able to see their mcq results after they complete their uh, their quiz is. So as soon as it's as soon as they finish, they will be able to see their results because the MCQ are scored automatically. Um, if we happen to have given FRQs, they would see their scores after you as the teacher score those FRQs. If you don't want that to happen and you don't want students to get their results until the entire class is finished and the quiz locks, then you would select no um, so that students can't see that until you enable it um, or the, the quiz closes. Um, so I'm going to leave mine on as after scoring. Uh, I can rename this. I can also scramble questions within sorry, from, from section to section, not within a section, but from section to section. So if I had a period one class and a period two class, I could give period one a certain order of questions. I could give period two a, a, a different order of questions. Uh, I cannot scramble within uh, a uh, a single period. I know that's something that teachers want to be able to do and our teams are taking that into consideration to see if that's possible. Um, and you also uh, cannot scramble the um, the answer choices at this current point in time. So uh, it will, however, scramble question order from section to section. Uh, start date and due date. Uh, the due date is when the assessment will lock and students will no longer be able to access it. Timer, uh, if you do have a timer, uh, I should note here that uh, if you specify a time, say if students have five minutes to do these three questions, students will see that timer when they are taking the assessment. When the time is up, the students are notified that they need to submit, but they also can continue working. So the timer is more of an instructional tool than it is to, as a means to cut students off. We did that for a variety of reasons. Again, topic questions are formative questions. They are diagnostic for both you as the, as the teacher and for the students so you can figure out and they can figure out what they do and don't understand. Um, but we also wanted to support students with accommodations so that you're not having to figure out how to extend time for individual students. Um, it, it literally will just uh, encourage students to submit when time is up, but allow them to keep working. And then on the results end, you will actually be able to see how long a student took to do a particular set of questions. So if you set the limit at five minutes and uh, Jose took 12 minutes to do it, you can then see that information um, and, and have necessary conversations as needed. 
Um, last but not least, the Lockdown Browser. The Lockdown Browser is a secure browser that limits what students can access on their computer as they are taking the, uh, the assessment. It is not mandatory that you use it unless the assessment that you are creating contains one of our secure practice questions. Um, those are designated by a shield, a blue shield icon in the question bank. For all other assessments like this one I've created with just topic questions, the use of the lockdown browser is optional. Um, so I'm gonna leave mine as no. I'm gonna click assign and you can see that this is ready to be opened and assigned to students. Um, I don't have students in my uh, fictitious class. I'm gonna make some students. Um, you won't be able to do this with your account because you actually have real students uh, in your account, uh, but I'm gonna generate some fictitious students here just so you can kind of see what this looks like. Uh, so you will have a, um, a list of students that will come up and you can see at this point, none of my students have started. And as they continue to work, this status will change. Uh, they will either say in progress or it will say scored or complete. Um, I'm actually gonna generate some results for my class. Let's say 14 students finished this. Um, again, you won't be generating results for your students. They will actually take the assessment. Um, I'm doing this so just so we can fast forward and show you what the results look like. So uh, you can see at this point now, I have 14 students that have completed and because they were multiple choice, uh, it comes up as scored. And I have one student that has not started. Maybe May Wood was absent for the day and she did not take the assessment. I can then go over to my results screen and I can see how students performed. Um, I should note that if you did have access to AP Classroom last year, you can access your data from the previous year. So I had all of these assignments in my US history class last year. Um, but I'm in 2020, 2021 now, and I can see how my students have performed on my th a set of three topic questions for topic 1.2 and skill 1A. If I click on this, I can see how many students scored in uh, the top uh, third, second, and lowest 25%. I can see which students fall into those categories. Um, and I can see a little bit more as well. If I click on the actual assessment, I can see how students performed on each individual question. So I can see right away they did best on uh, question two as a whole, maybe not so great on question one. And if I click on question one, I can get individual information about this question. In fact, I can see how many students chose each distractor. So maybe I don't necessarily need to go over why B and C aren't the answer because I just have one student that got that wrong or chose that particular answer. And I can see exactly who that student is if I click. Um, but I have six students that chose this distractor. And so maybe there's something about this that uncovers a misunderstanding that my students have that can help inform how I can remediate that misunderstanding, reteach, or uh, just quickly cover something to, to make sure that this is not a mistake that they make again in the future. Um, I can see that there are three other questions that were related to this in some way. If I decide that the skill was the issue, I can go back to the question bank and search for other 1A skill questions or search for other topic 1.2 questions. Um, I can also see one of my favorite views here is, is this particular um, view because I get a better sense of, of what common misunderstandings were. Like if I look at question three, I can see any student that got this wrong chose either question uh, choice A or choice D. So I know right away, I don't have to go over why C is not the answer because no student no student chose that. Um, and maybe less so of why D is not the answer, but I definitely need to go over why A was not the answer. And when I look at the rationale for A and I go back to that third question, um, what I can now see is, um, you know, wh why did students choose this, And right? Maybe there's something that I can uncover here that can help me prevent them from making that mistake in the future. 
So that's a really quick tour of topic questions, including where to find them, how to assign them, and how to interpret the results. Um, we will do a little bit more about assigning and interpreting results when we cover progress checks in the progress dashboard tomorrow. So I hope you will join us for that session. And then we'll do a little bit more with the question bank on Thursday when you join for uh, that session. Um, and again, if you can't join us live, please feel free to watch watch on demand at a time that works best for you. Uh, I hope that this session today has been helpful to you in some ways. You think about how you're planning ahead for the 2020-2021 school year. We know some of you will be underway very, very soon with August just around the corner. Um, so I hope you'll join us for the rest of the week and learn a little bit more about how AP Classroom and its resources can support your planning and teaching. Uh, I wish all of you the very best of luck with the start of your school year. I uh, hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Uh, and uh, thank you for all you do for AP and for uh, your AP students. Uh, we know that so many students wouldn't have the opportunity to engage in this level of academic challenge without your encouragement and your dedication to them and to AP. So thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again soon. Have a good one.